The nationwide protests appear to have subsided on Tuesday. The Nigerian government has said it will not tolerate calls for coups after some protesters in northwest Kano and Kaduna states waved Russian flags while marching in the streets on Monday. Nigeria's defense chief told journalists on Tuesday that hoisting the Russian flag amounts to treason. Timothy Obiazu reports from Abuja. Nigeria's defense chiefs held a news conference in the capital Tuesday, a day after authorities warned protesters marching with Russian flags and heavily armed soldiers occupied the streets of major cities. The news conference was to address days of violent anti-government protests in the country and to respond to calls by some protesters for a change of government. Speaking to reporters, Nigerian Defense Chief General Christopher Musa said that flying a foreign flag is a treasonable offense. We will not relent in pursuing those that have continued to encourage unconstitutional to take over of government or subversion, or those ones are into vandalism or destruction of lives and property. Thousands in Nigeria took to the streets in Lagos, Abuja and elsewhere last week to denounce President Bola Tinubu's economic policies and government. But security operatives cracked down hard on protesters using tear gas and live ammunition. Amnesty International says at least 13 protesters were killed nationwide. On Monday, hundreds of protesters marched in northern Kaduna and Kano states, waving Russian flags and calling for President Vladimir Putin to come to their aid. Nigeria's national police said nearly 900 protesters were arrested, including 30 who were carrying Russian flags. But security analyst Kabira Adamu says the military's interpretation of the protesters' intentions is too hasty and misplaced. There are instances, if you go around, severally where Nigerians do wake with the flags of other countries. Um, so it, one is a bit surprised uh, that this interpretation is we're in a democratic setting and the role of security and defense organizations in a democratic setting is, does not go beyond either law enforcement or the implementation of security policies. They do not have in any way a role of inter- interpreting or uh, making judicial pronouncements The Russian embassy in Abuja on Monday distanced itself from protesters using the Russian flag and pledged Moscow's support for Nigeria's democracy. But Russia has been expanding its influence in Africa and forming security alliances, especially in the cool red in Sahel states. Adamu says the acts of the protesters might be inspired by a growing resentment for Western influence in the region. The policies that are being implemented by the Tipola Tinubu administration have the backing of Western countries, um, especially the institutions of IMF and World Bank. And so when people in an organic manner um, now endear themselves to Russia, uh, it is perhaps an indication of that uh, they are not happy with, with, with those countries. These the policies that were supported by the Western countries and that um, Russia perhaps maybe a better, uh, you know, partner, ally. Western nations, including the United States, have said Russia's influence in Africa could set back democratic norms. But political analyst Ahmed Buhari says good governance from local authorities is all that is needed. These people are not oblivious of the fact that um, there is a current wave across the Sahel. They listen to the news and they can clearly see that Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso have um, presented very young leaders who are coming up with very, very strong stance with policies that seemingly look like they're going to benefit the people. And what I expect from the government of the day is to prove to the people that they are better friends to the people than any foreign ally at a time like this. On Tuesday, some protesters gathered in oil-rich river states demanding accountability. Nigerian authorities say they'll remain on alert to prevent any dangerous security incidents that may arise. This is fire negotiated in Rwanda between Rwanda and Kinshasa was broken even before it could kick him after violence erupted between the warring sides in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. 
In spite of committing to a ceasefire from August 4th, M23 rebels began advancing and capturing towns in the restive region, notably Nyamilima and Ishasha. According to the UN mission, MONUSCO, after four weeks of relative cessation of fighting due to the double humanitarian truce proposed by the USA, the rebels have violated their commitments to peace. MONUSCO strongly condemns the violation of the ceasefire of 4th August by the March 23 movement with the capture of Ishasha in North Kivu. This violation compromises stabilization efforts in the region and runs counter to the agreement signed in Rwanda on, on 30th July 2024, the peacekeeping mission said in a statement. The rebels themselves say that they are not automatically bound by the Rwanda negotiations. They see these negotiations as talks on a bilateral level between two states, DRC and Rwanda, under the edges of Angola. This explains the resumption of fighting in Kivu. Between Saturday and Sunday, some civil society actors reported violent clashes between M23 and local armed groups in the localities of Kisegulu, Katwigulu, and Kishalo, where at least eight civilians were killed and some inhabitants fled to Uganda together with some Congolese police officers. Nearly 100 Congolese police officers at the weekend fled to neighboring Uganda as fighting intensified, a Ugandan military spokesperson said on Monday. The officers arrived via the Ishasha border crossing in Kanungu district in southwestern Uganda, said Mejaki Choncho Tabaro, a regional spokesperson for the Uganda People's Defense Forces. The U.S. had earlier brokered a two-week ceasefire that lasted until Sunday. In that too, sporadic fighting was seen even though it was meant to allow humanitarian supply to the displaced. The M23 action is counter to the commitments between Rwanda and the DRC, who mediated by Angolan President John Lorenzo. President Lorenzo has targeted direct state-to-state -state talks between Rwanda and DRC as a longer route to ending the violence in eastern DRC. Rwanda is accused by Kinshasa of sponsoring M23 rebels. Even as Kigali accuses DRC of backing FDR rebels, remnants of the 1994 genocide seen as keen to destabilize the Rwandan state. Adam Chare, a member of the Alliance Freve Congo, Congo River Alliance, a core region to which M23 rebels said on Tuesday that the rebels had an unshakable will to rebellate the Congolese people. According to the communique of the July 30th talks in Rwanda, intelligence experts from Angola, Rwanda and the DRC were scheduled to meet in Rwanda on August 7th to continue consolidating peace efforts in the DR Congo and the region. Now the statements by the warring sides signal that violence will continue with the number of people in need of humanitarian assistance rising.